My name is Gareth Cliff and you're watching Joburg Today. He left a comfortable accounting job to grow a sneaker empire that has enabled him to uplift the unemployed youth in his community. Peter Ndoro speaks to CEO of Batu, Theo Baloy. So when I started, I just did not want to you know, build an African sneaker brand mm. that people can proudly affiliate with. I wanted to be different. Mm. I wanted to be innovative. And talking about trends and lifestyle, when I started in 2015, there was a trend around colorful socks, you know, mainly dominated by a brand called Happy Socks. You know, and in my travels, I realized that, you know, we actually don't have a happy shoe. And oftentimes when people are wearing, you know, um, happy socks or colorful socks, we can only see them when they sit down and the trousers go up or they're wearing a short. I started thinking about how about that we build a shoe, you know, that can show off your socks mm -hmm. when you're wearing them, and a shoe that can, you know, blow some air and have ventilation into, you know, uh, into your feet. And that's when I came up with the mesh edition concept that is made out of complete mesh material, you know. So the idea was to be innovative, you know, um, produce quality shoes that are built for comfort, you know, um, and build the whole sneaker experience, yet communicating the brand story. You were a, a consultant working yeah. for a, a premier accounting firm and so you knew the business side of it, the theory, and uh, you even advised on it. Yeah. It's a different thing when you actually now have to do it, especially when you're a pioneer. Mm. And I just wonder, what are some of the big lessons that you learned yourself um, in the last five years or so? about being in business and especially being a pioneer in a certain area? Yeah, I think I learned a lot of things. Number one, I think, you know, business teaches you to be patient um, and to be very strategic, but most importantly, to be intentional about your projects and really take into account, you know, what's really happening across the globe. So because you need to get to a point whereby you really know how to build your business model, but not only that, be able to commercialize it contribute to the bottom line and create impact. And that's a big job to do for entrepreneurs. And I think that has been one of my biggest lessons to say, now we're living in an era of social currency. How do I then become to build this brand that speaks to people mm -hmm. in social currency, you know, and then get to be able to go to the economics of my business and commercialize it, build, create, I mean, um, accrue a profit and then still create impact. So those dynamics of putting that business model together because you know it's very, very difficult and has been the biggest part of my lesson to make sure that I come up with a business model that is going to create impact in my society. Have you found yourself <laughs> having conversations with yourself as the consultant Theo talking to the entrepreneur Theo because business often doesn't work out the way you plan and then there are disruptions that come along mm. the way. Mm. We've had an economy that's been, even before COVID, yeah. was starting to slide, and then COVID happened. Yeah. What did the consultant Theo tell the entrepreneur Theo? <laughs> <laughs> and that's a very good question. And to think of it, I think I've always had the you know, uh, consultant Theo in me, mm. because even when I started the business, the consultant Theo advised the entrepreneur Theo to do so and mm. how to do it. To say, Theo, if you really want to uh, mm. penetrate this market, first and foremost, I'll help you do research and yeah. development and proof of concept and all of those things that are going to allow you to build this business. And the consultant Theo said to the entrepreneur that for the first two years of your business, don't open any brick and mortar stores. Mm. What you focus on is building your working capital that is going to allow you to invest into the growth of the business. So even nine times like this, I'm always, you know, um, trying to get to understand what are the new trends, where the world is moving to, so that I can advise the entrepreneur CEO to make the right business decisions for the business. And I suppose you have to anticipate trends because of the lead time in terms of design, yeah. manufacture mm. and actually getting them into the shops. Yeah, yeah. And then I think with that being said, that I think one thing that we as a country you know, we really need to look into because um, manufacturing in South Africa, the craftsmanship in South Africa is not as great as compared to the East or the other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So we really need to factor that in to say, how do we become competitive, you know, in the world by really helping, you know, uh, literally uh, building 
um, and I think returns mm -hmm. or shorter times of returns in terms of manufacturing, the lead times, so that our you know we can keep up to trends. Mm -hmm. Because now, if the lead time is anything between two to six months, you know it might inconvenience you know the retail business because of it's out of trend by the time it gets here, even the planning around it. But if we as a country invest in you know the craftsmanship and the manufacturing in our in our own country, so that we don't have to wait for longer lead times and we can catch up to trends and be competitive.